Good afternoon, everyone. If I could ask all of you to be seated. I know that uh, Korea is uh, a big market, um, if it were to ever become domestic, but it is definitely a site in which many of the operators are looking at. Uh, we have a very, very interesting speaker today. His name is Stephen Park. He's a senior consultant with GAPC and KTO Advisory Board, and they specialize in new market entry and policy. He has a very unique background of uh, working in Washington, D.C. for the Republican Party. Uh, he is a Korean-born American. Did I say that right? No. You're, you're Korean, but born, whatever. Okay. He's, he's back in Korea, so definitely bicultural, bilingual, um, <laughs> and obviously a very unique background to talk about uh, this exciting project. So, can I get you come? <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you very much to G2E uh, and uh, wonderful uh, welcome, as well as giving me the opportunity to speak today after 2012. Um, I would like to, oops, did I move something? Okay, good. I would like to kind of start uh, by briefly talking about what's happening in Korea. And I promise not to make you all fall asleep. And unfortunately, I don't have any slides prepared because I thought I was going to actually be on a panel. But nevertheless, I'll try to give you the summary of what's happening in Korea to the best of my abilities. Um, I, one of the interesting things about the topic that they chose for me today is it's quite pertinent. Uh, South Korea, the sole solution, and how to implement IRs. Because that's precisely what Korea as a government, as, as a market, is considering right now. Are we going to try to implement IRs, integrated resorts, with foreigners only casinos? Or are we actually going to try to open up, like Singapore, like Macau, and try to build mega IRs? So that's, that's kind of the issue at hand today. So since um, I last spoke here in 2012, let me just give you a bit of a background on what has happened in Korea. Uh, the general trend is that the Korean government, as well as the Korean market, is moving in the direction of adopting IRs, and it wishes to benchmark the success of Singapore. In terms of the Korean government, uh, in February of this year, the Busan city made an official request to the national government to permit casinos allowing local entry. In March, the government party lawmakers have openly discussed with the media that there were willing to submit a bill that would legalize open casinos in Korea. And probably the most uh, interestingly, in March 20th, the president, Park Kane, holding a live televised cabinet conference, said, quote, Korea needs a strategic approach to build multiple integrated resorts via foreign investment to attract more foreign tourists and grow the national economy. Vietnam, Japan, Taiwan, and Russia, and many other nations are already making great efforts. So if Korea falls behind, then we'll be at risk of losing out on the market. And lastly, on April 14th, the chairman of the National Assembly's uh, Culture and Tourism Caucus delivered a speech urging congressional colleagues to permit IRs uh, with controlled local entry. And these are some of the examples of changes taking place in Korea at the moment. And as you'll probably note, that the market has also been responding in kind. Uh, in October of 2013, the market, local, local market leader, Paradise, announced that it would invest $1.9 billion to develop an integrated resort in Yeongjong Island, which is by Incheon, next to the airport. Uh, in February, Genting Singapore announced that it would develop an integrated resort in Jeju, and its partner Landing International has acquisitioned the foreigners only casino in the island in April. And afterwards, probably most uh, significantly, in the 18th of March this year, 
Lippo and Caesars received the foreigners only casino license for its IR project in Yangzhou, marking the first time, uh, first license to be issued in 11 years. So these are some of the changes that are taking place in Korea in terms of both the government as well as the market. But of course, the bigger issue is, or, or the overarching issue is, are they going to allow these casinos to be local entry, whether it's controlled regulation, whether it's Singapore-style regulation. And I think the topics that the conference has laid out for you today in terms of the location of the IRs, as well as the market size and changes appeal to Chinese travel groups, all of that has to be looked in the context of whether we're going to allow foreigners to enter along with locals or just foreigners. Uh, if we're looking at just a foreigners only casino market, uh, assuming that the country is going to stick to its current regulation, then the issue of location for the IRs becomes actually quite simple. The two locations that are actually ahead of all the other provinces in terms of uh, hosting or trying to appeal to foreigners only casinos is uh, Cheju and Incheon. In Incheon, as I said, Lippo and Caesars has already received initial approval to build an integrated resort and Universal Entertainment as well as several other uh, operators are interested in developing foreigners only casinos. And in terms of Jeju, uh, the Malaysian Brajaya group is already developing an IR called the Air West City in the southern part of Jeju. And of course, Genting, Singapore and Landing International have acquisitioned a foreigners only casino also in a similar area in Jeju. So why is it that Incheon and Jeju are popular uh, developing locations for foreigners only casinos? Well, first of all, the Incheon is what we call a free economic zone. There are eight zones of such uh, areas in Korea. And the free economic zone is an area where if a foreign investor uh, were to invest uh, a total of $500 million, with a 